Hello, and welcome back to Crit and Crit. I'm Axiom. I'm not sent. Gasp! Who are you? What have you done with my co-host? I don't know, but I know what they want you to think. We are continuing through Final Fantasy V and our discussion of Harry Potter with the fourth book, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Or are we? Yes. As you might have guessed from my uh, flawless acting there, our topic today is the idea of conspiracies and cover-ups, which uh, we've talked about a little bit before with regards to the whole concept of the masquerade in urban fantasy, but we also start to see this becoming an actual thing with the ending of the story and the fact that the highest ranking official in the wizarding uh, world, in, as far as Britain goes, refuses to believe that Voldemort has returned, which means there has to be a convincing story to give to the public that does not contain the facts he doesn't like. Also, JFK was a uh, Levada Cadaver. The end. That looks like it hurt. It did. Comment me, bro. Anyway, Axion, what's your read on the uh, whole uh, conspiracies and cover-ups in the wizarding world of Harry Potter? Well, there's the obvious one. That this is definitely something that... the uh, leadership of the British wizarding world, at least, is very much involved in. Well, I was not expecting that to happen. Yeah, which I, I think... did not expect that to get used on me. Well, yeah. I think we're going to get a lot more of the active cover-up of Voldemort's return in the next book because, well, we basically get Fudge having a nope, nope, head in the sand reaction at the very last chapter, so there's not enough time for it to really build. But we can look more at the uh, criminal conspiracy angle, where we do have a very, very secret plot that is enacted over the course of the story deliberately designed to misdirect as many people as possible to allow something to happen. And let's be honest, the way Barty Crouch Jr. outlines his story sounds like something you might read in a deranged YouTube comic post at 3 in the morning. So, I just get my father, who's known to never bend the law for anyone, to break me out of the prison that no one ever escapes from and bury my mother there in my place and then I'll break free of his control which he's been using an illegal curse for and then I'm going to identity theft one of the most paranoid and well-known horrors in still, uh, still in the country and then I'm going to under Dumbledore's nose pretend to be this person who Dumbledore knows well all year and then I'm going to do use this to rig a high school sports tournament. Huzzah? It sounds like one of the more deranged conspiracy theories you'd see on pick your topic here. Like, it does not sound like anything logical, but the way we see it play out, you can see where all the signs would have fit for it. So, yeah. Harry might have a hard time convincing people of this story, if not for, you know, the fact that it was given under Veritasarum to a room full of reliable adults. Yep. Because it just sounds bananas. And that's how a lot of conspiracy theories sound. So, do we want to just go again into detail on the existence of the masquerade, or do you think we've beaten that topic to death and are about to make glue of it? I think there's not much we can really add. With, uh, with regards to that. That's fair. I 
I do find it funny that they managed to make it work with the most paranoid man in Wizarding Britain. Because, like, Moody's infamous for jumping at every shadow. You'd think he'd be the last person you'd be able to get the jump on. And that, maybe that's what, exactly why Moody was targeted, besides you know, the fact that he was going to be teaching at Hogwarts that year. So, we have what is essentially a conspiracy. Seriously, what do I have to do to chill this guy out? Uh, beat it until it stops moving, probably. It's been a long time since I've actually played Final Fantasy V, and I do not remember most things about the bosses. I don't. I'm sure there is a uh, trick to this guy, but I haven't figured it out yet, but... His magic is just making a mess of me. I don't know what to tell you. Maybe there's a secret that they don't want you to find out. Wake up, Sheeple. I'm so sorry. I hate that that's viable. <laughs> well, you shouldn't, context... you shouldn't have Bart's dressed up to do the Lammy Lammy dance. Good luck on seeing that connection. We just need Dipper's hat. But yeah, I think this is probably a good place to maybe talk about, like, where do conspiracies come from? Like, on the one hand, you have, we must enact the secret plot, so on and so forth, and the fact that some things like this have been known to happen sparsely, but they have happened over the many centuries of history, is what gives credence to the more outlandish conspiracy theories, at least in the minds of those who believe them. But this does not sound like something that could have happened, therefore... My theory doesn't sound that wonky. Like, think about how World War I started. It is such a random series of coincidences that it, if you described it to someone, point blank, of just, yeah, um, World War I started because the Archduke's driver got lost and took a wrong turn and broke down by a cafe. This is objectively true, but it sounds just so scripted and forced, but it can't possibly be true. So therefore, my theory that the moon landing was actually shot in a U-Haul outside of St. Paul, Minnesota, I don't know. I can't even make up a stupid one that makes sense. But the fact that you have these odd coincidences that happen like that make people more ready to believe things, and so people just start trying to spot connections where there might only be coincidence. And that's where you get a lot of this really, really weird stuff. But it can also come from just a lack of transparency. This is not to say that all state secrets should be available at all times, because that seems um, exceptionally dangerous for so many reasons I cannot begin to list them. But the more things are quickly quieted down and hushed up, the more the imagination begins to work. So, the fact that Fudge's first move when he hears, yeah, Voldemort is back, is to go into deep denial. This is going to be locked down very, very hard, which means any rumors that get out about what happened, and there will be, because Dumbledore made sure to tell every student at Hogwarts that Voldemort is back. So, it's going to get spread. No matter how hard the Ministry wants to keep it quiet, there will be rumors, there will be people talking about things. Some of them are in on Voldemort's return, because obviously they didn't get all the Death Eaters, or they let some of them go because clemency arguments. So that's going to be right to be exploited for misinformation, and the easiest course that they have is probably just to discredit the source of the information to begin with. A hormonal teenager. 
which, while accurate, we the readers know Harry was 100% right. So, yeah. I think he's gonna eat Leno. Yeah, but I have no real way to stop him. So, I'm letting him because if he's focused on eating her, he won't be meteor bombing the rest of my party. That's fair. But yeah, what do you think? Ah, uh, sorry, I got distracted by the thing. Repeat. Uh, what do you think about the whole uh, conspiracy theories are born of a desire to see connections in a world of chaos uh, yes, and right. uh, authority figures hiding things from people, like leading people to search even more fervently for those connections? It's not wrong, but it's... I want to say it's incomplete. Um, I would say that a big part of conspiracy theories is a need for validation and for, um, to make sense of a world that doesn't make sense. A lot of conspiracy theories come about for the purposes of For the purpose of giving meaning to something that lacks it. Yeah, like I said, connections among the chaos. Yeah. And... When you have people who are stuck in a situation where... Seriously, stop killing him! Hit someone else with the fireballs! Yes, kill Bart's. That's not, that I'm okay with. Um, I lost my train of thought. You have all these people who have... Basically no purpose to their lives. No... Real... Goals. No real... Power or influence. They are looking for something to make themselves... Relevant. And... To make them feel like they have something to contribute to reality and being part of a conspiracy or knowing about a conspiracy gives them this feeling of I have secret knowledge I have an insight to the way the world actually works that makes me important. That makes me uh, have influence or power that I would not otherwise have. That makes me in a position of relevance in a world. Hey! That In a world that Fine. otherwise discounts me as just another face in the crowd. That could be. I don't know if that's the case for every single person who has ever believed a conspiracy theory, but no, that could it's not. probably definitely be a part for some. Yeah, it's not a, it, it's obviously like everything, it's not universal. But um Yeah, I can definitely see, like, the need to be the smartest person in the room is a major driving force for some people. Because, uh... Yeah, I have met a lot of people that that seems to be a thing for. 
Yep, and it's kind of a big thing that we're having to deal with right now in real life. To yep. keep it as straightforward as possible without getting going down a political rabbit hole. We have a massive situation going on in the real world right now where people are spreading and sharing and proliferating misinformation and conspiracy theories and just keeping this information going and it's actively causing problems for the rest of us. Yeah, what I was going to say is it's also compounded by the fact that there is such a huge stigma against admitting you're wrong, that you've misread something, that you've made an error in any in any way, no matter how innocuous. And that kind of leads to people to, even if they get caught in their own evidence as it doesn't make sense even internally, you double down because being wrong is a sign of weakness rather than an opportunity to learn. And I don't know, I just... <sighs> I don't get it. I make errors in class quite often. Forget a comma here and there, catch it while I'm in the middle of talking about something, call attention to, oops, I messed that up, this is why you want to proof it more carefully. Because, I don't know. Being, a, a, being able to admit that you're fallible, that you can misread signs, that you can find connections that, are, that don't actually exist, being able to admit you're wrong, to learn and grow, and be an example to others, I think should be more heavily emphasized because people do screw up. It's gonna happen. And the more people double down on misinformation and just misconstrued evidence, the more people are going to get hurt. And we're gonna see that in full force when, or, when we hook up Order of the Phoenix after we finish up our listed topics for uh, Goblet of Fire because when you have Cornelius Fudge absolutely refusing under any circumstances to admit that Voldemort is back, that's going to leave a lot of muggle-blooded wizards in a very, very dangerous position. And it's all going to be on him when it comes out that he's wrong. Yeah, I'm not really sure what else I can say here. Not really much to say, I think, unless we want to just kind of reiterate what we've already discussed with different details. We can make glue from the dead horse. Yay! Yeah, until next time. See you then. <laughs>